Village on the Plains. Auburn, Alabama, final home game for the Auburn Tigers. And for 16 Auburn seniors, their last game on this field. Jordan Hare Stadium, a big SEC battle today as Auburn hosts number five, Texas A&M. Riding a five-game winning streak. Their longest since they joined the SEC in 2012. Here at home, four and six away. And how about the touchdown to interception ratio? 15 touchdowns, only one interception in 11 home games. About 17,000 fans on hand. About 20% of capacity here. Most of the tickets this season have gone to students, and a lot of students are here despite the fact that they're on break. Auburn won the toss and deferred, so Texas A&M will receive the kickoff. It's Chase Lane back for the boot from Anders Carlson, and we're underway. A big college football Saturday. That'll be a touchback. 50 degrees of kickoff are his best season. They start with the run fake and the toss. And it's Anaya Smith who does a little bit of everything for the Aggies, and they pick up 14 on the first play of the game. They've been superb this season. They threw for a season low 105 last week against LSU on target to their leading receiver. And he's the tight end, Jalen Weidermeyer, big, powerful player, as you saw there at 6'5", 265, and that's a gain of seven. Face. Meyer, former basketball player. Here's the toss to Isaiah Spiller, leading rusher in the SEC. And they're moving very briskly on these first three plays. They're to the Auburn 41. Some quarterback, he can hurt you with his feet as well. Given plenty of time, Spiller, a short completion, and then he got bounced around the range. Play clock down to two. Auburn brings pressure. Mon got it off. And we'll see where they spot it as Chase Lane circled back short of the line to make, but they're going to give him the 29-yard line and a first down. Really stepped up for him. First and ten on the delay. Isaiah Spiller lost the football, and AM recovers. There's the offensive lineman Carson Green, offensive line. Left guard Kenyon Green is a sophomore. The rest of them are seniors. Nice cut by Isaiah Spiller. And he's inside the 15. The lead. And you're seeing this AM power run. Spiller, six more. And have you seen anything yet from time consuming drive? Aggies lead the conference in time of possession, almost 33 and a half minutes per game. Mond wrapped up just short. Thought, as you said, playing a top five team would be a big help here today. This is a big game. And a flag down as they were lining up for this third in less than a yard. Offense, number 73, five yard penalty. Third down. Normally going to look for on third down is that tight end, Jalen Weidemeyer. Big body. Three wide receivers out there as well. Short set by Mont. Corner to the end zone. And it is Weidermeyer for a touchdown. Beautiful route on the corner route. He moved the defender inside. You can see his pass receiving skills. Take a look at the end of this. Make sure he got one foot in. There's the catch. Left foot in. Yep. 70th career. Touchdown pass for Mond and the extra point up and good off the foot of Seth Small as the afternoon goes along. Nifty opening drive by AM Caden Davis, a touchback machine, boots one through the back of the end zone. 14 and 7 with him leading the offense. Starts out of the gun and throws it behind his intended receiver, Anthony Schwartz. And let's say will play though he told me he feels good but Gus said it'll be like last week they'll just feel it out as the game goes on they try to swing it out to Schwartz again and they're 0 for 2 and Patton they're a run and play action pass team as coach Malzahn said tough to play action effectively when you can't run they complete a pass and how about Sean Shivers lowering his head trying to get to the first down marker 
He's not a big back, just 5'7", 179. He came up about a half yard short, and after some hesitation, here comes the punt team. Well, football is a game of leverage, and the play right here, I think. Oscar Chapman on the punt. Very high. And a fair catch made by Anias Smith. He had double-digit tackles in those first two games against Kentucky and Georgia. AM on the offensive side of the ball for the second time, and it's Spiller for about eight. Here's Matt Berry back in this Michigan. Get to the six games necessary to play in the Big Ten championship game. Good fake by Mond. Plenty of running room, and he scampers out of bounds just shy of midfield at the 48. And it was very sharp on offense after the sluggish performance last week against LSU. On target again, Mon. Now six for six. That's Weidermeyer again for the first down at the Auburn 40. I think he's just about as talented as Weidermeyer. Mon. Plenty of time and an open receiver. It's Isaiah Spiller again. Pulled down at the 33 yard line in College Station. Flag thrown, Spiller gets enough for the first down at the play stands. That's the last year we did not. Personal foul, shot block. Offense number 85 and 65. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains second down. Defensive lines. Second and 19 against pressure. They set up a screen. Nice call by Jimbo Fisher. And it's Weidermeyer again, back inside the 40 to the 38. They'll need eight more on this third down. Four-man rush, Mon steps up, fires into a crowd, and it is incomplete. It looked like it was going to be intercepted, but the defender, Nehemiah Pritchett, slipped down 12 times. And six inside the 20, as Jimbo Fisher said, he had his wedge game working very well. It was another good one. Fair catch made by New Year's Day, starting with the Rose Bowl game at 5 Eastern time. Bo Nix on target. Eli Stowe yanked down by Jalen Jones. Couldn't get away, but they got seven on first down. The field. He looked great in the pregame. He really did. Nicks with plenty of time, throws into traffic, and he's lucky he got away with that one. Diving attempt to pick it off by Keldrick Carper. Coverage, he's a big body receiver, very dependable. Sean Shivers with the first Auburn first down of the game as he ran to the 28 before Keldrick Carper tackled. He's a junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And then crowds the line and nowhere to run. For Shivers. Here's Matt Barry. It's a good a start. For you. start. Yeah. yeah, good start for your alma mater. They're running wide. Shivers running down the field. Shivers and almost running all the way to the end zone. It was Carper again, who might have been the last line of defense. First. 29 yard gain. They're back quickly. Shivers again, tackled by. Aaron Hansford is as athletic as any linebacker he's ever coached. Still really learning how to play the position. But he's been a factor on that very talented Aggie defense, Seth Williams. So down to Mark Anthony Richards, who would be their third string running back starting today. I'll start by Austin Paul Stark, so number 68. Offense, number 68. Five yard penalty. Second down. Single coverage on Seth Williams. Nix fires behind his intended target, but caught by Seth Williams. Uh, Blackledge, as usual, on his prediction game today. They're at the 25 and going quickly. First down. Well, Seth Williams is single coverage on the bottom. Three receivers to the top. There's no safety over the top. That's where you go. Some running room for Richards, but he ran out of it quickly. As Buddy Johnson, tackling machine, senior linebacker from Dallas. That's a little later this afternoon. Florida and Tennessee. Florida could clinch the East with a win in that one in the SEC. Kinds of people moving around there, and it's Sean Scheiber. They get pressure. 
pressure. Bo Nix has a man wide open and couldn't complete it. Eli Stove had broken open, but Nix with pressure coming was you know, off target. One of the things that we have talked about with Bo Nix, watch as he sets up. His feet don't stop moving. If he sets his feet, he makes an accurate throw because he's got a wide open receiver. For a field goal try from Anders Carlson. And he's on target. He goes to cancer research. As Allison said, they were diagnosed in high school, and Gus Malzahn told both, no matter what happens, you will have your scholarship. Finding light in their life with beautiful Kaylin Grace, Kalani Grace. Big hole in a big game. And Stevon Achain through the middle and out, are paid out of money that has already been given in an endowment to the V Foundation. Every nickel you send. And their ability to sustain blocks and work well together, very impressive. Opening another big hole for Achain. And he can really fly. And if Jamie and Sherwood didn't get him down, he would have flown to the end zone. He's inside the 25, first and 10, Aggie. See, now here's what I want you to see. Watch the left tackle, Dan Moore and Kenyon Green. Double team, then get to the next level. Pick up the middle linebacker, and that opens up the hole. When you can get to the next level on the front side of the play like that, it opens up big, big time for the running game. 28 yards for Devon Chain. And M on the move again. They stick with a chain. Wallop at the end of the run. But he got another first down. Smoke Monday made the stop. This offensive line, as Tom was saying, there are four seniors, three of which are going to get drafted, including Dan Moore and, and Carson Green, the offensive tackles. The best player, as Todd also mentioned, is the sophomore, Kenyon Green, the number 55, the left guard. And I talked to a scout yesterday just to confirm what I was seeing. He said all four of these guys, the seniors, are going to be in NFL camps come next year. And amazing, how about this, Todd? Last year, they gave up 35 sacks in 13 games. So far, in seven games, only three sacks. And two of those came in the first game against Vanderbilt. Eight chain, short game that time. Out of the pistol on second and eight. Kellen Ma, another wide open receiver. Another first down. It's Jalen Weidermeyer. Isaiah Spiller to the two-yard line. And that's what they tried to do, but Spiller got stood up just as he crossed the line of scrimmage. The truth, touchdowns. Third down and goal. Mon faked it to Spiller. He's running out of time. Just didn't get it off to Weidermeyer, who gets pulled down. Just shy of the goal line. Well, the replay booth, with help from the SEC headquarters in Birmingham, confirmed what we saw on the replay. Kellen Mond's knee was down before he released the pass. So they've moved the ball back to the 11 yard line. And as Todd McShay said, the kicker here, Seth Small, might be helped a little bit because distance isn't a problem. And this gives him a little bit better angle. 28-yard try, and he pulled it wide left to a big stop by the Auburn defense. And a poor kick by Seth Small, who had missed only once all year. December afternoon, here in the loveliest village of the Plains, where Texas A&M has dominated, but leads just 7-3. to three. Bo Nix out throwing, Anthony Schwartz. Halfway through the second quarter here. Here comes Anthony Schwartz. And I believe Tank Bigsby was on the field. B. Schwartz. And certainly the defense went toward Bigsby, aware that he was in the game. Some more trickery. Nix goes down at the 39-yard line. Played quarterback here in the uh, early and mid 90s. Bixby is back in the game and not a deep boy that time. It's a first down. When they arrived here in the loveliest village on the plains. Oh, Nick. Sings one. Beautiful throw. 
Seth Williams still on his feet and down at the Aggie 26. We should have seven instead of three. Yep. Take the lead on this drive. Here's Bigsby. Powerful freshman. Gus. SEC freshman of the year last year. Takes off running. He's inside the 10 and down near the 5. Nice read by Bo Nix. He here now at number 89. This big, big East. Right end at the left. There's Bigsby. Could not get away from Leon O'Neill, the junior safety from Cypress, Texas. In that game, clearly he wasn't close to 100%. They replaced him with Shivers. Nick's under duress. Got away. How did he do it? Now he has blockers in front of him. Bo Nix to the goal line. What a touchdown. Well, he's looking for Seth Williams to throw right now. It's not open. Now, how he gets away is just Houdini-like. Beautiful awareness once he gets outside the pocket, picks up a couple blocks. And Defensive lineman, one of the best in the conference, and powerful at 6'4", 325. The extra point is good. It's the second December home game for Auburn ever. They beat Alabama. December of 1989. Of course, the season started late due to COVID. Auburn leads 10 to 7, and a fair catch made by. Here comes Kellen Mond and the Aggies starting from the 25. And here they go again. They've been moving the ball at will, it seems, but still just the seven points. Smoke Monday made the stop after a 15 yard pickup. Well, watch Kenyon Green, this left guard. I mean, he is just so powerful. Again, Probably the most talented on this offensive line group just takes his man about seven yards deep into the backfield mm -hmm. and Spiller just running right behind him. Approaching three minutes to go in the half. Lots of time for Kellen Mond and on target into Auburn territory. A first down. It's Hezekiah Jones. Short field goal. Auburn brings pressure. And Spiller stuffed by Owen Papo after a short gain. He's at and then using the clock. They have plenty of time. They don't want to leave Auburn time. And this possession's over. A chain moving the chains. First down inside the 30. Time Weidemeyer was the lead blocker. He's the guy that's going to get the block on Papau. Number zero, there's the block. Smoke Monday with a missed tackle from his free safety position. Minute and a half to go. Mind a strike. Anaya Smith fell down as he tried to cut her. He might have gotten more out of that one. Lauder started using its timeouts here. Time is not a problem for AM. Isaiah Spiller, powerful, refusing to give up. The Maroon Goons giving him a shove to help him along, and finally it stopped at the one-yard line. Just Spiller running with so much more violence. And on first and goal, they do not score. Sherwood trips up. And down here, uh, close. Mon keeps this time, and it's a touchdown. Well, last week, Kellen Bond made a, a mistake. You don't see a veteran guy make. He stuck the ball out on a quarterback sneak on a third and one play. That time he protected the ball, did not go over the top. He's going to go underneath on this one. See how he protects the ball and got it across the plane for the directing the offense, running and passing right down the field. And now take the lead again. Small adds the extra point. Jimbo Fisher, not only a terrific play caller, but very good at managing yep. the clock. Game fans hoping somebody knocks off Clemson. It's possible for the Aggies to move into the top four. First they have before that last possession by the Aggies. Especially a five-yard touchdown run. They ran all over the field. 
Bigsby out to the 33. Auburn has three timeouts left. Looks like they're going to take them with them to the locker room. And they'll get the ball to start the third quarter, but I, I agree, Sean. They they could have stopped the clock, and even if AM scores, give themselves a chance here at the end of the half. But Gus Malzahn choosing to take him to the locker That's room the with them, trying to start the third quarter with the football on offense. Fisher is head coach, 174 yards, but just a four point lead. The second half kickoff. As we take a look at Auburn with the ball first here in the third quarter. Bo Nix comes out with a play action pass. Now scrambles away from some pressure. Look at him go again. Bo Nix almost got to midfield. He had a spectacular touchdown run in the first half, and that was an electrifying play to the 47-yard line. Well, DeMarvin Leal, number eight, really did a great job of pressuring the quarterback, but Bo Nix shows his niftiness of foot and turns that into a big play. 22-yard play. He flips it to the speedy Schwartz, world-class sprinter. And he's all the way down inside the Aggie 30. Second down run on the reverse last year at Texas A&M. Nicks, the handoff fake and a loss of two as he got dumped by Buddy Johnson. Here's Alice. Sean Shivers at running back now. They give it to him. He has some room. And he's chopped down at the 23. Nice tackle by Leon O'Neill. Coming back this year, Austin Troxel, highly recruited, is the left tackle now. Nix pulls it down again, gets the first down. Dives head first inside the 18-yard line. Took a knee in the helmet, was a little slow to get up. Bigsby's back in there. He towers inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Now he's back into the backfield. Nick's faked it to him. Type routes or back shoulder throws this part of the field. Third down and three. Opening possession of the second half. Bigsby breaks tackles and gets the first down. That's what makes this kid special. His ability to break tackles, to throw bodies off. Of O'Neill had a chance to stop him, did not. Nick's another fake. Nick's another touchdown. And Auburn reclaims the lead. What kind of an effect does Bigsby have on a defense? <laughs> a big effect. Watch these defenders right here. Their eyes are on number four. Bo Nix keeps the football, gets a block from his tight end, Schenker, and gets in the end zone. Auburn, impressive opening possession to start the third quarter. Two rushing touchdowns for Nix. Honors Carlson the extra point. For rushes. As they went 75 yards in nine plays. Took 424 off the clock. Carlson's kickoff is a touchback. And we'll take a look at this week's college football rankings. Brought to you by Capital One. Alabama in action tonight. Notre Dame should be able to handle Syracuse that has one win. Kind of nice to see all those teams other than Cincinnati playing the last couple of weeks We'd be seeing top 10 teams with games postponed or canceled kind of nice to see everybody in action the Bearcats with the weekend off There's one thing working in A&M's favor. They're number five. They do have a head-to-head -head win against Florida and On the first play from scrimmage of the second half for the Aggies hits and yep. right and they don't realize that A&M maybe is the more complete team. They were that day in College Station, Bryan College Station, and they're, you know, they've been the best defensive team in the league. For Alabama in the West, but that matchup seems likely. They hope that Florida gets handed its second loss of the year by Alabama. Christian Tutt makes the tackle, but Mond has run for the first down. Auburn brought a blitz. The blitzer stopped. It was Smoke Monday. Kevin Steele told us he was playing with a very sore rib cage, injured early in that game while he was covering a punt. Pass over the middle. Knocked the hat off the head of the umpire. Russ Pulley. 
as you said earlier, they were number one on third down nationally before the two for 16 last week against LSU. Here comes pressure. Bond escapes. Throws on the run, and it's batted away. Nice defensive play by Roger McCreary. And right now, Jimbo Fisher's telling Kellen Mond, just run that. If you run it, you're going to pick up the first down. He does a great job of escaping pressure. Auburn brought a blitz. Free rusher. He gets outside. Now, right now, just run it. Make the first down with your legs instead of trying to throw that ball rolling to your left against tight cover. And Jim on right now knows it. Nick Constantino. His punt is handled by Eli Stone. Well, next to start the third quarter, they really kind of got everybody fired up. Nick's handed it off to Sean Shivers around the right end. It's hard to understand their usage of Bigsby. I mean, if he's good enough to go, maybe they just want to use him in certain situations. Nick's got it off before the rush got to him. Eli Stowe managed to get enough through the tackle of Buddy Johnson to pick up the first down. First and ten. Here comes a blitz for AM. Buddy Johnson through the middle. Now he's trying to run down Shivers from behind. And Sean tripped up as he crossed the 45 yard line. Buddy Johnson the sideline, 20 or 30 yards away. Here's Tank Bigsby. Where has he been? Rested. And well rested, he runs all the way to the 11 yard line. Great blocking on the left side, Austin Troxel, the new left tackle on the block at the point of attack. And then watch the cut. Puts the left foot in the ground, back to the inside, breaks a tackle. 42-yard run, just a seventh carry of the day. His eighth, he drags defenders inside the 10-yard line. Ground pick of the Tampa Bay Bucks out of Auburn. Bo Nix on second and eight, short throw, hoping for run after the catch and didn't get much of it from Kobe Hudson. Four points on the board with a field goal. The opportunity for him to run or pass. Straight pass and his throw too high. Trying to get it to Brandon Frazier, a tight end. Chip shot for Carlson and it's good. Brothers Carlson, his brother Daniel. The tank is the perfect nickname for this tough running running back. Carlson. So AM did a must-win game if they're going to be a part of the college football playoff, which starts with the semifinals on New Year's Day. Down by six, and a hard hit by Derek Hall on Isaiah Spiller. Anaya Smith, sophomore from Missouri City, after three games with an ACL. Cameron Buckley, injured in the preseason. He would have been a big part of their receiver rotation. So they've done a remarkable job throwing the ball without three of their best wide receivers. Spiller, the ball carrier. They say it is a first down. Daquan Newkirk made the stop for the Tigers. The guy I think that they can get a big play with is Chase Lane. That's him up here, number two. Weidemeyer, he works the middle of the field. Kellamon very comfortable with him. Chase Lane is the guy that can get something down the field. Bond, after nice execution of that fake, his pass is incomplete. Spiller was open. Well, Spiller was open, but Chase Lane was wide open for an even bigger play if Kellen Mond would have looked at it. Here's Chase Lane. Watch him run the post route. He's going to be open for a big play down the middle. Todd, he had three yards on him. I mean, <laughs> that was going to be easy money. It's down the field. Good decision to keep it by Bond. He's across midfield, scampers out of bounds at the Auburn 
48-yard line. We're down to 218 to go in the third quarter. Just a straight little lead option. They're going to option the end man. And he gets Christian Tut kind of in that bind. Tut takes one step towards the pitch man, and Kellen Mond keeps Receivers to Mond's left. Boy, every time they've given it to him today, something good has happened. Taken down by Jalen Simpson. It's another AM first down. Just a true freshman out of Missouri City, Texas. The great speed. Trying to get him in the open field again. Gary Hall. Wrestled him down to the 20. Has struggled lately to stop the run, and that's been the case again today. And it's the case on this play. A chance, and I'm not just a speedster, I can run with power as well at 5'9, 185. And he's down just shy of the 10 yard line. Well, a nice job by Weidemeyer getting a block downfield, staying on his man. It's been the impressive thing with Weidemeyer. We knew what he was like as a receiver, but he's gotten much better at the point of the attack as a blocker. Apparently there's a flag down on the play that we didn't see. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist. Offense, number 54. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. May second down. Well, they were called for a chop block in the first half, and Jimbo Fisher in the half told Allison Williams he didn't like that call. There it is, number 54, the right tackle, Carson Green. Again, one of the best things they do. Thank you, Allstate. Well, here's a fan who is certainly heeding the guidance from the <laughs> CDC, social distancing, wearing a mask. Of the 17,000 fans Hello, spread boy. out at Jordan Hare Stadium. Four-man rush at Kellen Mond. They dump it to A-Chain over the middle. And he's down at the 35 of a field goal situation where maybe they could use their regular kicker set small Mond felt pressure from behind on target and a diving catch made for a first down by chase lane at the 20 yard line really nice catch by lane going down low this is another one where kelamon probably could have run and maybe got the first down tough throw across his body play booth is not stopping the action so on we go Mond down the seam Deflected and caught for a touchdown. Weidemeyer has it after it looked like it was going to be intercepted by a disconsolate Zacoby McClain. Mon looking for his favorite target. Doesn't get the ball quite high enough. McClain gets both hands on it, but Weidemeyer there to catch the deflection. And McLean did everything right. He read the quarterback's eyes. He, he was in position. He just didn't make the play on the ball. Two interesting plays in a row that go against Auburn. A low extra point is good by Seth Small. Texas A&M with its third 75-yard touchdown run of the day. Or touchdown drive of the day, rather. Right? Has taken a 21-20 lead. Eli Stone. Bringing the kick off back, and he nearly broke it down at the 32-yard line. Second touchdown run in the second half. On first down, Shivers forced to cut it back, and he's down for a loss of a yard. Well played by Keldrick Carper. All 70 yards or more. They've had a couple where they've settled for field goals. Nix couldn't find anybody deep. Gets ahead for a couple. Here comes... Schwartz, give them three receivers on the right. Nix throws it to the left for a back shoulder. It didn't look like the receiver was ready for the arrival of the ball. Devian Capers wasn't looking for it with Miles Jones in coverage. Nia Smith changes uniform numbers. Miles Jones is also on the punt return team, so he throws on 19 very quickly. The second of the day for the Tigers. 45-yard punt. AM with the ball and a lead. And a tough run by Isaiah Spiller. He gets 11 and a first down. Here's Matt Berry. With the run by Spiller, he's over. 100 yards rushing for the fifth time in the last six games. They stick with him, and he gets knocked back. 
Short of the line of scrimmage for the Gators. Ellen Mon called a culture changing victory. They haven't lost since that game. Weidermeyer, another first down. He's across the 45, pulled down by Spoke Monday. Seventh catch of the day, 39 for the year, leading all SEC tight ends. Option, Mon keeps it. Good idea. First down, 41 yard line of Auburn. In the previous two games had given up more than five yards per rush to the opponents and getting gashed again today. Mon kept it that time and got whacked by Zacoby McClay. Hands on him at the line of scrimmage. Play clock at two. Second and 11. They do throw a deep ball to an open man. Car! Smith inside the five yard line. <laughs> When you run a fade from the slot, you've got a lot of field to work with. A little stutter step, that throws Joe Christian Tut. And player. Kellen Mond found Anaya Smith for the, for the big throw down the field. The first big throw down the field all day by Kellen Mond. Back now to start this play. Not see much eye formation from Texas A&M. Spiller leading the way. Anaya Smith has the touchdown. Isaiah Spiller becomes fullback on that play. I'm sure he's not used to doing that easy either, but watch the left side of the line and the lead block by Isaiah Spiller. And Anaya Smith just falls. Lead. It was their fourth touchdown drive of 75 yards or more. Playoffs. We'll be back at it again that way this year. I can't wait. <laughs> You know, we, we had no idea if, it was, if that was going to happen. I think impressive, important that they be impressive in doing it, too. They haven't been as dominant as some thought they would be this season. Tank Bigsby gets Almost midway through the fourth quarter now. Nick's under the rest. There's also a flag down where you'd expect a holding call. He was chased out of bounds with a loss of a couple. Holding. Offense, number 56. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Nice second down. I think this is really good by Mike Elko, the defensive coordinator. There's the hold on Manning to the left side, but when Bo Nix is flushed out of the pocket to his right, he's very comfortable throwing the football down the field. When he goes to his left, he's more likely to run than he is the to throw. And I think that time they Third were designed to force him to the left. See if they can create some separation. Dix checks it down. Shivers gets rocked and cannot bounce away. Miles Jones there for a and m And this is going to be two straight three and outs at the worst possible time Official for Auburn. timeout. Notre Dame. Here's Oscar Chapman to punt. And a good one. Fair catch made by Anaya Smith. So that's five seconds in time of possession. You know, Jimbo will try to use as much of the clock as he can. Isaiah Spiller, a short game. Six minutes to go. Four man rush. They don't affect Mond. He dumps it off short, incomplete. But Jalen Weidemeyer with Jim. Dancing around like they might blitz. They don't do it much. And they rush just four. Mond steps up, has some running room. Has the first down. Big play by Mond, who with that run makes history. He goes over 1,500 career rushing yards. Uh, just a great decision. The kind of decision you expect from a guy who has played and started and won as many games as Kellen Mond. The only quarterbacks in SEC history with 9,000 career passing yards and 1,500 rushing yards. <laughs> Doing a great job of using all of the play clock right now, too. Short pass, Weidermeyer, chopped down at midfield by Zacoby McLean. That's his career high, 15. Six out of nine, the Aggies today on third down. This is third and four. Again, just a four-man rush. 
And Mond is on target again. Anaya Smith, first down with a couple of yards to spare at the Auburn 44. Wisely using almost all the play clock. Smith down to the 40-yard line. There's the first one behind to keep his team right where they want to be at the number five ranking. They keep it on the ground. Spiller first down and much more to the 25-yard line. Uh, they needed not only to win today, but to play well, look good doing it, and they are. First and ten. Anaya Smith squirts down to the 20-yard line. You'd think Malzahn would get Kellen Mond when he has dropped back to pass. Second and five, Auburn in desperate need of a stop. Anaya Smith to the 18-yard line. Going in the game. If they pick up the first down, it's game over. And Anaya Smith appears to have it. The official from the far sideline is running in. Well, both officials look like they're going to spot him short, so apparently he rolled. 33-yard attempt. And it is just barely good. Looked like it was heading directly into the right upright into the last minute. Leaned left and got through. And A&M is about to end. This three-game losing streak head-to-head -head with Auburn. Wow. <laughs> One of the special teams areas as well. An important win. That's a good Auburn team that hadn't lost at home this year. Probably two regular season games left for A&M. And here's how they size up with the top four teams. One loss against Alabama. Clemson's one loss, of course, to Notre Dame. The Rats have a chance to avenge that, like they will in the ACC championship. They can't all, excuse me, but if, if they, what they need is what we showed earlier in the cartoon. They need Notre Dame to beat Clemson again. It would help if Alabama would beat Florida. And they're certainly going to get a stronger resume if they were both one-loss teams. But they probably will do everything that they can do, which is take care of their business and then wait and see what else happens. Bo Nix certainly battled to the end. He is fun to watch. Control at the line of scrimmage. Well gained Auburn. 5'11 to 3'44. They've had more than 16 minutes more time of possession. From that standpoint, they've had control of the game. Offside. Defense, number 35. Contact in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. And then scheduled to play Old Miss. The schedule just revamped this week by the SEC. Nick's in trouble. Can't go down in bounds, and he does. It was Aaron Hansford who pulled him down. Loss on the play, and the clock runs under 30 seconds to go. Of course, Old Miss has paused its football activity, but they expect to resume them. Third down, 12. It's the three-man rush, and they still flush Nix, who flips it forward to two Shivers for a very minimal game. A lot of familiarity between these two programs. And a lot of levels. Nix throws a sinker low and away, and that's going to do it. Intended for Seth Williams. So the Aggies will take over on downs. And another huge win. You know, they needed that kind of signature win to have everybody buy in. They got that against Florida. Yes. And uh, they played like a very confident football team. Kellen Mond told us last night there's a noticeable difference in the kind of atmosphere around the team since that win. There's a belief they could do something really big. Well, this is the longest win streak they've had since Jimbo's been there. The recruiting has been good. They're in a great position. Need to keep doing their part, likely with two regular seeds and games left, and then hope that they get that help. But it's quite possible that they'll get the help.
31-20 is the final. A&M finishes the game with 510 yards of total offense. Mond 18 out of 23 for 196 and two touchdowns. He also ran for one, his 20th rushing touchdown of his career. Joining Johnny Manziel, Joel Hunt, Bucky Richardson as the only A&M quarterbacks who have ever scored 20 rushing touchdowns. Bo Nix 15 for 23 for 144. Some memorable runs. He had his first career two rushing touchdown game. Rushed for 49 yards and all. Had about as exhilarating a five-yard touchdown run as you'd ever see. So when the plays needed to be made, it was A&M who made more of them. And they go to seven and one. Certainly can't imagine them dropping no. in the standings. No. We'll at the very worst be at number five when the rankings come out Tuesday night on ESPN. In just a moment, we'll hear from Jimbo Fisher. They had exactly 16 minutes of an edge in time of possession. They held the ball for 38 minutes to 22 for Auburn. Here's Allison Williams. Thank you guys very much. Coach Fisher, Auburn was able to keep this close for much of the game. What enabled your guys to pull away and get this road? I just think we're growing up as a team and understanding how to play. The momentum swings don't bother us as much anymore, and we're learning to play the next play, do what you control, what you control, and answer and drive. Had a big, we were 17 to, when they were ahead, and we got them stopped for a field goal. Then we could go get the drive, then we got another drive, then we got another drive, and got first downs at 8 o'clock. Critical plays in the game. Our guys are growing up and knowing how to play those plays. What impressed you the most about your offense and what you guys were able to do in the run the, game? The consistency. The diversion of runs we had, the consistency and the different things we did, the packages, and how hard our guys run our offensive line did a heck of a job, and we blocked well up front. What will your message be to this team about the focus and mentality they need to close out the season and position themselves for the playoffs? Get ready to play Ole Miss next week. This lasts for 24 hours in the morning. We get ready to play one game at a time. Thank you, Jimbo. Thank you. He deserves a lot of credit. He's a terrific game manager, play caller, puts his players in position to best utilize their skills. Big win for AM. Very much alive in the college football playoff picture. 31 20, the final score for the two Todd's and Allison. Sean sending you back to the studio once again. Here's Matt Berry.